So, Coach, how strong is Westview this year?
feel it in the air You're singing over me I don't have a song left to sing You sing You fight my enemies I don't have the fight left in me You fight for me You make a way When I can't find one My freedom's come History. Fear of man has lost its hold on me. Oh, I can see again. You make a way when I can't find one. My freedom's coming. Good morning and welcome. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. As folks are filing in from the welcome area, just wanted to extend that welcome. Whether you're watching online with us, whether you're here in the sanctuary, again, we are blessed to be here with you this morning. I do have a few announcements this morning. As we are a very busy church, uh, there's lots and lots going on here. As I mentioned, weekly we have so many ministries that are going on and so many different things that are uh, taking place in our community that we're involved in. It's important that we bring those to attention. Uh, next week, however, one thing that's going on in our community that is out of our control is going to be a community-wide power outage, uh, May 22nd, which is Saturday night from about 11 p.m. until daylight on Sunday. They are shutting the grid down in Fredericktown, and they are doing that, I guess, to do some upgrades and such. And if all goes well, the power should be back on in time for church. Uh, if all does not go well, we are going to be worshiping the Lord with an acoustic guitar, our voices, and, uh, and a, the old piano over here in the corner, which is perfectly fine. But that does affect those of you that are on our live stream, because if the power is not back on, we won't be able to live stream. Um, so just wanted to put that out there, wanted to make sure that everyone was aware. And just pay attention, obviously, if your house is still dark, you know the power is not back on which means you're probably not going to be watching church anyway because you don't have power either. So that will be next Saturday night, 11 p.m. till approximately daylight, uh, something along those lines. Now, next Sunday, uh, we are having communion. We may be having communion in the dark, and that's okay as well. Um, but if you are watching at home online and you want to make sure that you have the elements available for you, if you want to partake in communion with us here in the sanctuary, we'll have those elements available uh, for you guys as you come in. So next Sunday, we will have communion. Our high school graduation, the FHS graduation, is Friday, May 21st. No cheers, no excitement up here. Oh, come on. Got a couple graduates on the stage with us today. Um, Friday, May 21st. There is a list of the graduation celebrations in the welcome area that you can pick up on your way out. Um, that way you have 
one sheet containing all of the places that you need to be over the next few weeks as we celebrate our graduates. Our golf outing is still June 6th. I believe we are still registering teams. I think we have room for more. All right, so uh, get a team together. Get a hold of the office. We'll get you signed up. I told, said in the first service, I said we play in the rain or shine as long as it's not lightning. Uh, and here in Ohio, it may be snow that we're playing in. You never know. So come prepared. Uh, we are going to have a great time. We are going to have awesome fellowship. And I don't know. Maybe this is the year that Janice gets upset. We'll see. Um, maybe maybe, uh, maybe she'll, uh, she'll work the numbers a little bit, pencil whip the old scorecard and make sure that she wins. I don't know. We'll see how it all works. Uh, but it is for a good cause. It is for our building fundraiser, which we are actively working on still and probably will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, we do have infant baptisms and dedications on June 13th here. So if you are interested in that, get a hold of the office. Uh, as well, the 28th or 29th, we will be having adult baptisms and youth baptisms. If you're interested in that, that will be at the Bender's property. And we'll have more, uh, more details as we draw closer to that date. I also wanted to let everyone know uh, Ralph Davis passed away earlier this week, and his calling hours will be from 5 to 7 at Robert's Funeral Home tomorrow. So um, prayers for the family there as well. And Larry has a couple of announcements for us here as well. Hi, I'm Larry Andrzejewski, and I just wanted to uh, alert you to the fact that we at uh, Starting Point, uh, which is the Knox County uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center, is... Uh, having one of the fundraisers, and it's the baby bottle campaign, which is reappearing after two years. Last year, I don't think we had a chance to do it, so things are getting back to normal. Um, and starting point, of course, uh, we're dealing and helping women who are in uh, crisis pregnancy, and also uh, we're there to, to uh, help out and protect the unborn children. Um, uh, my wife and I will be passing these out in the back if you so choose to have one. Um, just fill it with coins, cash, or uh, check. Uh, and the end of this drive will be Father's Day, which is June 20th. You can give it to us any time in between. We'd like to have them all by the 20th. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Larry. All right, I'm open to a word of prayer this morning as we prepare our hearts for worship. Father, we just ask this morning that you would send your spirit to move in this place. Lord, that we would be free to worship. Lord, that we could set aside all of the distractions of this week. Lord, to focus on you. Won't you move in this place this morning? Let us be free to worship. You call us to worship with our hearts, with spirit and in truth this morning. Let us do that as we gather in your name. And it's in that name, the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand together this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Oh, who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. Oh, all my
put their hands together. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the end. Good to see these guys up here on the stage. I'm telling you, this is, as I've said many times in the past, this is the future of the church. This is, this is the next generation. And, you know, I'm nothing special. I'm just up here beating on this guitar and, and singing songs because God has blessed me with the, the ability to play guitar and to sing. And it's so awesome to see these guys up here using the gifts that God has given to, uh, to come back and to praise him. So I would encourage you, uh, maybe God has laid something on your heart. Maybe there's a, a desire in your heart to serve in some way, shape, or form in a, in a ministry capacity. Um, here in the church, here in our community, Larry just talked about an opportunity that he, he participates in uh, here in our community, and, and I know he does some ministry down at the jail as well. But maybe God's working on you right now. Maybe God is uh, tweaking on your heartstrings like I'm playing on the strings of this guitar right here. And, and maybe it's time that you you respond to that call. Maybe it's time that you... You finally say, okay, Lord, I know this is where you want me to be, and I know this is what I need to do. How do you want me to do it? How, how can I use this to glorify your kingdom? And sometimes we have to lay down that, that pride that we have or that fear that we have or whatever it is that's preventing us from, from following up on the call that God has put in our lives and, uh, and just take that step. Because I know I remember the first time I asked these guys up here on the, on the platform with me, um, I'm pretty sure their microphones were shaking like a tambourine as they were up here singing. But look at where God has brought them now. And I'm fully confident that as we launch them, as they're, they're graduating, a couple of them are here graduating, and we launch them out in the world, that God is going to continue to use them. Um, whether maybe it's in a place like he's put me, and, and maybe they're going to step up and become a worship leader somewhere, or maybe they're going to be on mission somewhere and God is going to use them to to change the world so God is good all the time as we say and all the time God is good and that's what we're going to sing about now because if you love the Lord you know he's going to use you because that's what he does he takes his children and he he draws them in close and he blesses them with gifts and and talents and then he says go go and make a difference in this world go and and bring people into my fold so let's do that this morning Love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see the goodness of. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing the goodness of God I love your voice 
You have led me through the fire The darkest night You are close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend And I have lived the good
just praise you this morning. Lord, we ask for that song we just sang. Lord, let us put you at the, the center of our lives. Lord, make you the king of our hearts. Father, let the, the songs that run through our head be songs of praise to you, songs of worship and adoration. Lord, there are so many things that go on in this world today that can draw our attention, that can pull us away. Father, we ask today that you help us return daily to you. Lord, that we seek your will in our lives. Lord, that we seek your face first and foremost before anything else. Lord, bless the rest of this service that you could truly show us who you are through the words of Scripture and through the message that is given today. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Doing something just a little bit different this week. Uh, we are going to move right into a special music. And I was uh, asked earlier if uh, I would be willing to play a song. And I said, certainly. Um, as one of our former graduates here comes back up and uh, continues to use the God-given talents that she's been given. Um, and I asked her, I said, well, what song do you want to sing? And she said, well, I don't know. Maybe this one, maybe that one. And we, we settled on this one. The song is called Blessings. Um, it's a song that kind of goes right back into what I was just talking about. All of those things that that we see in the world that pull us away from God, that, that kind of maybe discourage us or, or take us and draw our attention. Um, in reality, God even uses those things to bring us back to Him.
Thank you, Kylie. That was beautiful. This past Tuesday, the church programming staff had the opportunity to meet with our new pastor, Gail Angel. Richard arranged the meeting as a way to make a smoother transition for this summer. She was very kind and grateful for the opportunity to meet us and to learn more about what we did here. She had us go around the room, introduce ourselves, and tell about our ministry area. She also took lots and lots of notes as we told her what it is that makes our church stand out. Many true statements were made that day. We believe in outreach. We value our children and our youth. We have strong adult Sunday school classes. We offer three distinctive worship services. We truly care about one another, and the list goes on and on. But one of the statements that really stood out to me was this one. We are a small town church that can do big things. I really like that statement and I hope that we'll embrace it. We can continue to be a small town church as we sincerely love and care for one another and offer prayer requests to each other. We can be a small town church as we feed our community on Wednesdays. We can be a small town church as we support our schools and our local leaders. And we can be a small town church as we celebrate with our graduates in the upcoming weeks to come. But let's not forget the part of the statement that says we can do big things. Yes, we have the space, the capabilities, and the desire to do big things. Our space has greatly grown in the last two years, and we must continue to support that. Last month, in April, we brought in $12,125 for the building fund. This is a significant amount of money, but it is less than what is needed to pay our monthly mortgage. Our operating funds collected were $40,499. This exceeds our monthly budget and will allow for existing and continuing ministries that meet our desire to do big things. As we transition into the summer months, church attendance generally declines a bit. But this year, I think we have a renewed excitement for being here, and I hope that it keeps us all in the pews. But whether we're in the pews, watching at home, or attending between vacations and outings, let's continue to be faithful in our giving. Let's continue to be faithful in our prayers for one another. Let's continue to be faithful in prayer for our pastoral transition. And let's continue to be that small town church that does do big things. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 2 Kings 2, 1 through 14. I'll be reading out of the ESV. It says, Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. 
And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that, the, that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Now keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Now keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophet also went ahead and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please, let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. May God add understanding to the reading of his word this morning. <clears throat> Thank you, Ross. <clears throat> As I was uh, watching and participating in, never just want to watch, but I was as I was participating in the worship this morning, seeing these lovely young ladies up here, um, and then when Kylie came up and, uh, and uh, shared so beautifully, and uh, we had wonderful first service where <clears throat> a lot of people shared, and, and it, was, it was special as well. Um, I had an overriding thought. We talk about reaching out and reaching others, and... Um, I want to say to you, church, God has equipped you to do just that. God has equipped you to do just that. You have gifts here. You have graces here. You have talents here that as, and you are using them for God's glory, oh, God is going to use you in a mighty way, church. He's going to use you in a mighty way. So it's not like we're, we're sitting here with, um, you know, and it's a pipe dream that we reach out. No, we're ready. We're ready. And God has equipped you, and God has uh, brought the people here necessary to reach out. And so the sky is the limit, and God is going to use you in a mighty and wonderful way. Well, as my Sundays here dwindled down to a precious few, I've been giving, I always give a lot of thought and prayer to what I want to say, but I've e been doing that even more than usual. Because there are some things I want to say that I think are important and need to be said. Months ago, we did a series on uh, the life of Elijah. And we concluded the series by looking at when the Lord took him to heaven. The scripture that you heard this morning. Now, at first glance, even though the way he departs from the earth is miraculous, the account itself is pretty straightforward. It just lays out the details. But a closer look here shows that there is more than meets the eye. And it has a lot to say to the church right now. And it has a lot to say to each of us as individual Christians. So I want to revisit that amazing event and the events leading up to that amazing event. The events leading up to Elijah's departure from this world. You may remember that in the latter part of Elijah's life and ministry, he became overwhelmed. He became overwhelmed with his responsibilities. 
and he let fear get the best of him for a time. And so God, in his mercy, appointed Elisha. He appointed Elisha as Elijah's helper and successor. And so Elisha was ra- around at the time, or as the time for Elijah's departure neared. And as I'm hearing this account this morning, I'm thinking of all the pairs, if you will, in the Old Testament. I think the most amazing pair in the in the perhaps in the Bible, but certainly in the Old Testament, that were there at the same time and a participant in the same events. Can you imagine being there, uh, for instance, in that group of prophets, in that school of prophets, that seminary, when they saw, participated with, had interaction with both Elijah, greatest, greatest prophet in the Old Testament, And Elisha, his successor, who literally did more miracles than Elijah. I mean, what an amazing pair. And that shows you that even though Elijah is about to be taken here, man, God has just lined things up wonderfully for Israel to thrive. And so you have these series of stops, uh, these places that the two men visited before Elijah was taken. And it seems to have become known, it seems to be common knowledge that Elijah was about to be taken. Because not only did Elijah himself know, Elisha knew. They're going to visit a couple of seminaries, schools of prophets. They knew. So it seems like it's rather common knowledge that Elijah is about to be taken up to heaven. Now at each of these stops, Elijah would say to Elisha, you stay here and I'm going to go on further. Now, what I think is really going on here is that Elijah is testing Elisha to see if he's determined to follow him and get the blessing that God wants to give him. And Elisha always responded with words to the effect, No, I am not going to stay here. No, I'm not going to do what you say. I am going to follow you wherever you go. I'm going. I will not let you out of my sight. Elisha knew that something was about to happen. Elisha knew that Elijah was about to be taken up. And he said, I'm not leaving your side until that happens. But at each stop, Elisha, you could almost say, is tempted to stay at that spot and go no further. And that's what I want to focus on today. Temptation to stay where we are and to go no further. And this is a temptation that's been brought out in this pandemic. It's a temptation to, oh, let's just settle here. Let's just do the best we can, we can here. Let's just kind of hark here and not press on. But Elisha was not supposed to do that, and neither are we. So I want to look today at where Elisha was tempted to stay and what it means for us today. The first place that Elisha is tempted to stay behind at is at Gilgal. As the story begins here in verses 1 and 2, they are at Gilgal. Gilgal was the place of the beginning in the promised land. It was the first city that Israel took after crossing the Jordan River into the promised land. The first Passover was celebrated there. Gilgal was where the manna that had sustained the Hebrews for 40 years in the wilderness, Gilgal, when they crossed into the the promised land, went into Gilgal, that's where the manna stopped. Gilgal was where uh, the Hebrews started eating the food of the land. So it was a place. It was a place, an important place, a place of a lot of firsts. It was an important place as a marker, if you will. It was important as a commemorative place. A lot of important things happened there. But the Hebrews were never told to stop there. They were never meant to stop there. They gave, there is no indication in the Bible at all that they gave any thought at all to stopping there. No, that was the launch pad. That was the launch pad for taking the promised land. They were not supposed to camp there for the rest of their days. So many Christians, we are tempted to settle down where we start. And and we never go beyond that point. 
if, if, you ask, if you ask someone and they're Christian and you ask them, well, describe your walk with God. Well, they describe, they identify a time maybe years and years ago, a moment a long time ago, where they went forward at a revival meeting or a church service. That's great, wonderful, but that should have been a beginning point, not a place to stay. God is not a static God, and He doesn't want us to be static in our relationship with Him. In the New Testament book of Hebrews, here's what Paul writes, or here's what is written to the church. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you've come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use, uh, by reason of use, they've exercised them, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What is being said here is that by this time in your lives and in your walk, you should be bearing the burdens of others. You should be teachers and workers and helpers. But instead, they, these people who have a belief in Christ, but they haven't moved deeper. They haven't gone deeper. And so they are, in fact, yes, they're Christians. But as far as the church is concerned, they're almost burdens because they need to be instructed time and time again in the elementary things of the faith. But that's what happens when Christians settle, when they settle too close to where they started. Oh, that's what I want to tell you today. Don't settle. Don't be content where you're at. Elisha said, I'm not staying here. He said to Elijah, I will not stay here. I am not staying in Gilgal. I'm going with you, Elijah. I'm not going to let you out of my sight. There must be a Gilgal for all of us. There must be a place of beginning for all of us. A starting point in the Christian life. But nobody is meant to stay there. We're not meant to stay where we start. Never are we meant to stay where we start. We're to start where we start and then we're to move on. Church, the essence of who we are to be as Christians is not babes or babies but maturing, going deeper in our faith together as a church. Together. That is what we are to be about. The second place, the second place that Elisha was tempted to stay behind at was Bethel. It tells you about that in verse 2. Elisha told Elisha again to stay at Bethel. Bethel was the place of dreams. That was where Jacob had the dream that we know as Jacob's ladder. Dreams can be great if they're centered on the Lord. Elisha is tempted to stop here at dreamland and join the dreamers. Dreams are good if we dream and then do. Dreaming is okay, but it's not enough. People dream of drawing closer to God but then they never really do anything to make that dream a reality. Many Christians do not get beyond dreamland, always thinking about how they'd like things to be, but never actually moving forward. Jesus did not sit around in heaven and dream and say, I wish those folks would turn to God. He didn't do that. No, He left heaven and did something about it. He didn't sit around on earth either. No, He made the Father's will happen in cooperation with the Father. And we're not to be, we're to dream, yes, but we're to move beyond our dreams and not just, not just sit there and dream our days away about how we wish things could be. The next place that Elisha was tempted to stay behind at was Jericho. Jericho was the place of past victories. That's where the Hebrews had their first real victory in the promised land. Remember when the Lord had them march around the city for seven days and then God call, caused the walls to fall? Elisha was tempted to stay behind at the place of past victories. Many Christians and churches are content 
to settle down in Jericho, the place of past blessing, and talk about the good old days. They talk about the old church, the old services, the old pastor. They want to hear about the good old days. We are never ever to forget what God has done for us in the past. A big chunk of the Bible is reminding us of what God has done in the past. But at the point, the point of those reminders is to use them as a foundation of faith. That God did it before and God will do it again. Every past victory is meant to propel us forward into future victories. Every past victory is meant to increase our faith. Not to dwell where we are or to dwell in the past, but to propel us forward. The Bible says that the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. We're to live every day expecting new victories and expecting new experiences with the Lord. When you woke up this morning, did you really expect God's mercies to be showered upon you and to have a new victory today, to have a new experience with the Lord today? That's the way we are to approach every day of our lives. <coughs> the next place, excuse me, Elisha was tempted to, to stop at. He was tempted to stay on the other side of the Jordan River. The other side of the Jordan River. That's the place of the past life. The life without God. The place they and we came out of. There are two types of Christians. Only two types. One lives in the land of God's promises. The other lives on the other side of the Jordan without having the promises of God come to pass in their lives. If you remember, when Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land, there were two and a half, two and a half of the twelve tribes. They said, we want to live on this side of the Jordan. We don't want to enter into, into the promised land with you. We want to stay on this side of the Jordan. Now what was happening as they were approaching the promised land, those two and a half tribes looked around and they had a lot of animals and things and they looked around and they said, wow, look at these pasture fields. Look at this is great land to, to have farms and to raise animals. And so they went to Joshua, they went to Moses at the time, and then they said, we don't want to go into the promised land. Let's, let us stay on this side of the Jordan. Now God did not free them from slavery, from Egypt, so they would stay outside the promised land. But that was their main concern, what was best for their animals. Not what God wanted for them or their children. It reminds me of the Old Testament story, the earlier story of Lot. When Abraham with his nephew Lot, and, and they, they both had so many animals and things, that they, they, Abraham said, look, we need to split up. We're getting too crowded here. He said to Lot, look around. Where would you like to go? Pick where you want to go, and I'll go the other way. And Lot looked around, and he saw some well-watered plains, the Bible says. And so he says, I'll take that. And so he took his animals and his, his retinue down there. Well, where there's well-watered plains were was Sodom. And we know how that turned out. And that, this story reminds me of that. Because you see, God doesn't force his will on us. He wants us to want his will. That's where our part of the Christian life comes in, cooperating with His will for us. He won't force us. So God allowed those tribes to stay on the other side of the, of the Jordan. And one of those tribes was the tribe of Gad. Gad. Now, I fast, now if you will, fast forward with me to the New Testament times. Jesus visited this area. The land, the Bible calls it, in the New Testament language, it calls it the land of Gadara. It's the same thing. You remember the story. He found people there raising pigs, which was forbidden for Jews to do. And after he drove the demons out of the man into the pigs, the pigs went over the hill into the lake, and the people said, what did they say to Jesus? Please, leave us. Get away from us. We don't want you around us. Folks, when we leave God's will, we may tell ourselves, we're just going a little bit, we're just going a little ways off. We're not going to 
throw out everything. We, we, we just, this, this particular part of it, though, we're not going to obey God. But what happens? What happens? The end result will be a departure from Jesus, an estrangement from Jesus, to where we don't want to be, even be around Jesus. And that is such a tragedy. I have seen that in Christians. I have seen that in churches. Oh, folks, stay obedient. Stay obedient. And stay in love with Jesus. Stay in love with Jesus. That is the important, most important thing. And there was one last place that Elisha was tempted to stay. And that, interestingly enough, was at the Jordan River. The Jordan River is a good place. It was the place of present victories. Here, was Elisha, here, here Elisha had his first uh, miracle. He takes the cloak of Elijah after Elijah's uh, gone up to heaven, takes his cloak, called his mantle in the Bible, strikes the water, and the river parts, and Elisha passes over on dry ground. That's a place where something good happened. But it was only a small taste of what God intended to do through him. The Jordan was not where God's plan for Elisha was going to unfold. If he had settled there, none of those 15 recorded miracles that are in the Bible would have happened. John the Baptist started at the Jordan, but he didn't stop there. If Jesus, he, who began his public ministry at the Jordan River... If he had stopped at the Jordan, there would have been no Calvary, no resurrection. The Jordan, it's a good place, but it is not the place to settle down. Where you are now and where this church is now, it's a good place. God's moving. God's blessing. But it's not the place to settle down. It's not the place to settle down. We're to keep going. We're to keep pressing forward. My favorite movie clip of all time is from Facing the Giants. I've used it before here. It seems appropriate that I play it again here. Okay? From Facing the Giants, my all-time favorite movie clip. <laughs> so, Coach, <coughs> how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a lost Brock? Well, not if I know we could beat them. Come here, Brock. You too, Jeremy. What, am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. The 50? I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. Okay. You gonna give me your best? I'm gonna give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. I get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right, let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground, just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. There you go. Show me good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. <laughs> That's it, Brock. That's it. Not the 20 yet? Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more in you than that. Hey, done. Just rest in a second. You got to keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving. Keep, keep your knees off the ground. That's it. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very
very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on, keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know he's heavy. I'm out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Keep going. Burn. And let it burn. My arms are burning. It's all hard. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Come on. Keep going. You promised me your best. Your best. Don't stop. Keep going. Too hard. It's not too hard. You keep going. Come on, Brock. Give me more. Give me more. Keep going. 20 more steps. 20 more. Keep going, Brock. Give me your best. Don't quit! No! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Don't quit! Don't quit! Don't quit! Brock Kelly, you don't quit! Keep going! Keep going! Go, Brock Kelly! You don't quit on me! No! You keep going! You keep going! Go, Brock! Keep more steps! Keep going! 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 Keep Five more! Five more! Come on, Brock! Come on! Don't quit! Don't quit! Come on, Brock! Two more! One more! Oh. It's got to be the 50. It's got to be the 50. I don't have any more. Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. Brock, you are the most influential player on this team. If you walk around defeated, so will they. Don't tell me you can't give me more than what I've been seeing. You just carried a 140-pound man across this whole field on your arms. Brock, I need you. God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Coach. Can I count on you? Yes. Coach? What is it, Jeremy? I weigh 160. Who's next? Who's ready to give God all you got? Who's ready to not quit? You notice that as he was struggling and straining and giving God all he had, you notice how everybody stood up and started following and started watching? Folks, as you give God all you have, you're going to have people watching you. You're going to have people following you. You're going to have people that want to be part of what's going on, and they're going, to be, want to have, they're going to want to have what you have. Folks, if I'm to come back here, if I ever come back here in future years, I hope to see familiar faces and familiar ongoing ministries. But if that's all I see, I will be disappointed. No, I want to see new people here, new ministries here, and I want to see you continuing to look forward he has great things to accomplish as we trust Him. And so with eyes firmly set upon Him, we can move forward. The goal of this church, oh remember, there's stuff going on, but remember this, the goal of this church should not be uh, to be in or out of a denomination. The goal of this church is not to add to a building the goal of this church is that when Jesus returns, He will find us living for Him and working for Him and bringing in the harvest. Never, ever, ever settle for anything less than that. Never settle for anything less than that. That's what Jesus calls us to do. That's what He died to give us the freedom to do. 
Now let's get out there and do the work he's called us to do. No matter what takes place in the future. Work. Follow him. Trust him. Folks, <coughs> it will be... I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I know that. I know that. But um, it would mean a lot. This is a visible sign of saying, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit following. I'm not going to quit serving. God's going to be glorified in this church. It would mean a lot. During our closing time here, as the music is being played and the song is being sung, just come up, stand up here and say, God, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go forward. This church is going to go forward. Yeah, a lot of things are going to happen along the way. But when you return, Jesus, we're going to be here doing your work. The altar is open and the invitation is given. Let's stand together. <clears throat> Savior, I come, quiet my soul.
With our eyes firmly set upon you, we press forward. We forget those things which are behind and we press forward, Lord, into what you have for us and the fullness of what you have for us. And you have many wonderful things in store, many amazing ways in which you're going to be glorified. Many things like Elisha had to look forward to so many miracles that you were going to do through him. So this church has so many wonderful things to look forward to. So let us press ahead, Lord, in you and for your glory. Oh, we thank you that you are with us every step of the way. You have promised you will never lead us, leave us or forsake us. And so we are so thankful here today. And we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.